Hi, I'm Jack Duell with jackinthenet.com and in this tutorial series I'm going to show you how to use Elementor Pro and all of its Element widgets. If you want to see what they look like then go to elementor2020.co.uk I've laid them all out for you so you can take a look at them. And to get Elementor Pro go to jackinthenet.com forward slash EP. There you'll be able to get the membership you want, download the plugin and then upload it to WordPress. By the time we finish this tutorial series, you're going to be confident in using Elementor Pro to make a beautiful WordPress website that gets you the results you actually want. So please like the video, make sure to comment and subscribe. Now, let's dive in. Okay, in this one I'm going to show you how to use Elementor Pro's nav menu widget to create a menu around your site. So the first thing that we're going to do is obviously put it into the page. And I want to put it up here because there's two ways that we can use this. We could use it to create an actual header menu and I've got a separate video which I'll link to where I show you how to actually build your entire website's header using Elementor Pro's theme builder and we make use of the nav menu in that. But in this one, I'm also going to show you how to do something a little bit different because this is the website that I'm using for these Elementor Pro tutorials, elementor2020.co.uk. You can go here and you can browse down and you can look at uh, how each of these different widget elements looks. But I want to put in a little menu up here with shortcuts to each of these widgets so that you can just come in, you can click the relevant widget that you want and it's going to automatically scroll down the page and it's going to take you to that particular widget. So it's really useful and that's what I'm going to do with you here today. So the first thing that I want to do is add in a section between this one and this one here. So I'm going to press the little plus button here and then I'm going to go right ahead and I'm going to drag my nav menu into the page. Although what we could do if we wanted is create a couple of columns. So actually I'm going to create one that looks like this and then I'm going to grab my nav menu and drag it on over here to the right. Now by default what this does is grab my main menu which is what I've got up here and it puts that in. Now I don't want it to do that but at the moment it's the only menu that I have. Of course if this is what you want, really simple, obviously you would position this so the columns are how you want them and then you've got your horizontal menu going across the page. If we wanted we could change it to be vertical so then it's just going down and obviously we can align it as well so we can have it on the right, the left, in the middle, you get the idea. We'll go through more of these in just a minute. But what I want to do is have a different menu. So I don't want my main menu. How do we do that? Well, I will show you. But in order to create one, we actually need to have some links that our menu is going to take us to. So let's say that I want it to take us down to the portfolio element. Effectively, I'm creating a anchor menu here. So what I'm going to do is come into my section settings where I have the portfolio element. So I click into here. And then under the advanced section, I'm going to come down to CSS ID. And in here, all I'm going to write is portfolio hyphen widget. So if you've got two words, make sure you put the little dash between them. And then what I'm going to do is copy this, update, and then we're going to head on back to our WordPress dashboard. So exit to dashboard. Now what I want to do is come on down to appearance and go to menus. And then I want to create a new menu. So we click up here, create new menu, and I'm going to call this uh, elements menu, create menu. And now we need to add some things, but unlike a normal menu where we've got pages that we would add, here I'm going to be using custom links. So I click custom links and it gives us the URL and link text. So my link text, I obviously want to call this portfolio. Now the URL, this is where we've got to be careful with what we put in here. So because I'm creating uh, an anchor menu on a page, I need to put in the full website address in our custom link. So HTTPS and it's elementor2020.co.uk forward slash. And then I put in the little hashtag or pound sign that we've got there. And then I'm going to paste in my portfolio widget. So that's the text that I put in the CSS ID, the section settings, as you just saw. One final thing to note here, the reason that I've uh, just put in the website address and then forward slash and immediately followed it with this is because I'm doing this on the home page of the website. If you're doing this on a separate page, for example, your about page, then you would put about and then another forward slash, okay? That's what's going to tell this what page to find that CSS ID on. 
Mine's on the home page, so I don't need to do that. I just leave it like this. And uh, then I click Add to Menu. So it appears here. I can then click Save Menu. And now, if we head on, uh, head on back, so Pages, Home, Edit with Elemental. Here we go. OK, so I come back to our Nav Menu widget that we just put in there. And now, instead of it uh, just having the main menu option, we've got Elements. So if I click on Elements menu, there we go, it's appeared there. But I don't uh, just want to have a horizontal or a vertical line. What I want to do is have a drop down. So now we get this little hamburger toggle button, which is what we have down here. We could obviously turn it off, but I want it on. And I'm going to put this back so it's how I had it, which I think was around 70-30. And now the idea is that when, uh, when somebody comes in, they can obviously click this. It comes up with this portfolio option. And now if we click it, fingers crossed, there we go. It scrolls us down to that part of the page. So that's how we do that bit. What I'm now going to do is uh, go and add in all of my other elements in here. And then I'm going to be back with you to go through the rest of these settings. OK, so I've added in my other menu items, which we can see along here. And what I've done is just put in my Elementor logo and also a title and an icon pointing over to my menu. So I've created two. So you're going to be able to see what it looks like having it in the two different styles. So this is going to be in the final result uh, that I want with it like this. But I'm going to show you how to style up both. So what I'm going to do is go back on to our nav menu widget. So this is the horizontal layout. As I mentioned, you can have the vertical one if you prefer. When you've got this option selected, you're going to see these options. So you can align it to the left, to the center. You can stretch it across the page. The pointer, currently it's underlined. So we see that we get this line coming underneath when I'm hovering over it, which is quite nice. We can make it framed if we prefer. If we go on background, then it just fills it in. So there's a few options that you have there. I'll leave it on underlined for now. The animation is currently set to fade. If I go to slide, then we see that it's now sliding in, or I could have it drop in instead, and then we get that effect. So that's actually quite nice, I do like that. And the uh, the submenu indicator, again, I'm gonna leave this on classic, but you can change it if you want to. Same goes for your mobile dropdown. So this is where you can choose the breakpoint for tablet and mobile. So what you choose here is going to uh, depend on when it actually changes over to your little hamburger icon. Because when the page gets small enough, naturally the menu no longer fits. So it, that's basically the point at which you want it to break and change over to our hamburger icon. You can choose whether or not you want it to be full width. I'm going to leave it off for the moment. And again, we can choose whether or not we want to actually have that hamburger and align it. When you've done that, what you want to do is come up to the style section, and this is where we can start to actually make it look like we want it to. We can obviously change the typography, make it bigger or smaller, and we can change the text color. So at the moment, you see that it's blue and it's changing to orange when I'm hovering over it. Well, if I wanted to change that, we could say text color is going to be green, and the pointer color is going to be, let's just say light blue as it's there. So now you can see that my underline has turned to the light blue, and obviously, the text is turning to green. You can also change the pointer width, so that's made it thicker. We can alter the padding if we want to, or we can change the space between. Naturally, that's going to uh, make it fall off of the edge because I've got too many items in this menu, but within reason, you can adjust the space there. You can change the drop down as well. So if you've got a sub menu, then you can change how that looks here. I haven't got one, so I should have really added that in. Let's do that so that you can see what it looks like. Head on back to the dashboard, back over to uh, Appearance and Menus. So let's say that I put the portfolio underneath the post. So I just move it over to the side. That's created it as a sub item of our post element. So let's save the menu and head on back over to the site. Edit with Elemental. So now what's happened is we've got this drop down that's appeared. So it looks like this. And that's what you can change under the style section here uh, underneath the drop down. So again, what we could do is change the background color if we wanted. Let's make this sort of an orange color. And now that happens. We can obviously change the text color as well. So if I make the text color white, we can see that because we've just given it the orange background. We can see that's changing on hover. So I could go to hover, change that if I want to, make it green. Now that happens. So this is where you can style all of that up 
We can change the border type. We could have a double border if we wanted to. We can change the width of it, change the color, the border radius, all the normal stuff. We've done that quite a bit already. So your toggle button, that is the hamburger icon that we've got over here that's going to appear on your mobile devices. So let's switch over to the mobile view. So this is currently our horizontal menu, and as you can see, it's now changed to this little hamburger. It's quite difficult to see, so we could change this to red if we wanted, like this. Background color, let's make it blue. We can obviously increase the size of it. You can change the border width around the edges and also the border radius. So this is how you can adjust that. I've sort of unintentionally made that look a little bit like Spider-Man's costume colors, so I'll not actually have it like that. But um, that's how you can obviously change it. But I won't focus on it too much because that tutorial that I am going to link to where I show you how to actually build your header for your entire website. We go into all of the options in a lot of detail. Right now though, I wanna head back up to this option, which is the one I actually want for my site here. And that's where we've chosen the drop down layout. So now if I go up to style, if I actually click on this, this is what it looks like. So this is normal. If we change the typography, then we can obviously bring that up a bit. I could bold it if I want to, but I think it looks okay like that. Same with the text color, that's okay. Background color though, let's maybe try the blue. No, I don't like that. Let's leave it on clear and let's just change it when we're hovering over it. So background color like blue, that's better. I like that, I think that looks good. We could obviously change the text color as well, but I like it that it switches to white, so we'll leave it like that. We don't need to change the border on here, but we could always change the padding. So if I change the vertical padding, we are obviously getting more space at the top and the bottom. If you change the horizontal one, it's gonna mess it about a little bit. Doesn't work too well because we've got our column quite small here, but you can obviously play around with that for your design. And again, toggle button, we could change this if we wanted to. So if I bring up the size, that's gonna adjust it. The difference here is it's actually doing it on the desktop view. We don't need to be on the, uh, on the tablet or the mobile because under content, we chose the drop down layout right from the beginning. So that's a little bit big now. I think I'll bring it back to maybe around 30 because I can always come in and increase the size of the other things I've put in there. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think all I need to do now is get rid of this one here, update this, and let's take a look at it. Okay, there we go. I really like that. All I need to do now after the video is increase the size of these here so that it matches in. But now we can come, click on our menu. I have a drop down menu as well if we wanted, although I'm gonna get rid of that. But when you click on something, it brings you down to that section. So if I click on the login element, it's gonna slide us down the page to that particular section. And I think that's really cool. This is such a great widget, definitely one that you can make use of. And I'll put the link in the description to my tutorial on where we actually build the whole header for the website. And then you're gonna see all of the other possibilities that we can do with this amazing widget as well. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope that it's helped you. Make sure to post any questions or suggestions that you've got in the comments. Like the video and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.